you've got nothing to lose tomorrow. You got your you got your golden ticket at Havelina. I mean, we know that you like to race a little spicy from the front, but uh, I'm kind of I think we're all a little bit curious what we might be expecting from Heather out there tomorrow. The competitor in me wants to see what I can do against the best out there. And so those are the races I get excited for. When I look at my calendar, I look at the races that are considered the championship level races. And those are the ones I want to show up at and see how I can compare to the best in the world. I want to show that I can run better than last year on this sort of terrain and better than what I showed at Western States because I think people probably think, oh, okay, like she won Havelina. Of course, it's probably one of the easiest trail races out there. It's like smooth dirt, which is fair enough. It is, it's fast running for me. It is perfect because it is, it's running on smooth, on a pretty smooth trail for one little part but I want to show that I'm working on and hopefully doing better on more technical terrain and can race some of these other, I guess, more trail-like races than just a javelina. So I certainly am here wanting to to hopefully show that. So you still have, to, you still have something to prove? I do have something to prove. <laughs> seem like Give it quick. Yeah, but it's not like taking off. Like what I was saying is like what's all this stuff out here like if you need to or this stuff here. But also if it's 30 degrees out it's gonna be hard. Right. The mud isn't gonna be like wet. Right. So Maybe this isn't the stretch that we're talking about, but I don't see it getting like. Well, I I I keep going to like this has gravel in it. <laughs> this is gravel, uh, and it's yeah. not where the cows walk. So just run on this part right here. <laughs> this is what? Why are you laughing? This is the line right here. <laughs> Look at just up here. You can see it gets more trampled all the cows but I mean it's still not like crazy but even this still feels fine to do that see but But again there you go (laughs) you got this over here why are you keep laughing at me? Look at this. This is your line. Uh, dude, this isn't bad. This is... I think, it, and again, it's going to be hard. I mean, I think, like, what is the advantage of those? Just that first section. The first three miles at sub six minute pace. <laughs> Yeah, but, the, this but, is the most technical of the first 20 miles is the thing it turns into like super smooth single track part there's like an open trail area like it's not these rocks right here are like the most of this part so and just to have a little more cush for 20 miles and then I go into the speed goats I didn't see rain last I checked even if it's above freezing like it's still gonna make this ground hard but if it's raining, then it won't. Right. right. Like what you're yeah. saying. Well, yeah. we that. Well, we had snow on our arrival, freezing, like in the 20s. Uh, some rain. Um, obviously, leaving the conditions here, a mixture of mud. Yeah, the weather for racing is always a funny thing because you spend months prepping for an event and you think you have an idea in your mind of the conditions and how to prep for that and then anything can happen in the hours before race day and the conditions on the day and 
I think that it just comes with the hype of an event coming that it gets blown maybe way, not way out of proportion, but it gives you something to focus on in the hours leading up to something. So I just remember every year before Kona, it would be like, oh my God, it's going to be so windy this year. Or it was always, you know, it's going to be an extra hot year. And it was this thing that everyone would just be caught on because it, I think it was just something for people to like focus their energy on instead of trying to like stay relaxed and calm the nerves. And so I think similarly, it's like, okay, it is affecting things tomorrow, maybe equipment choice, but I know the gun will go and then like, yeah, it's time to run and you'll deal with what you'll deal with out there. And yes, maybe one shoe will be better for certain sections, but maybe not for others. So there, there's always a give and take and you have to go with what I think your gut tells you and what you'll feel comfortable with and then deal with how that equipment reacts when you're out there and there's no, yeah, just completely correct answer, I think. So it's just keeping that in mind and it's okay to like have something else to focus on versus the nerves right now. <laughs> just focus on the weather and, <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, it's more just like staying calm right now, not wasting energy and um, calming the mind before it's time to actually, yeah, use all of that out on course tomorrow. Heather Jackson right Heather there. Jackson. Yep, they got cameras on. So that would be Heather Jackson. Got oh, now here's the women's back right there. Hey, Heather Jackson came through by herself, uh, gapped up, you know, almost two minutes in front of that secondary chase pack. 
I that honestly am more excited about the ladies' field this year than I am the men. Like, the women's, man. I think it's going to be oh, so man. tight in such a competitive race that it's going to be so exciting to watch on the board. I'm out here at Hidden Treasure. We're a little bit around, what, about an hour and a half, hour 36 into the race so far. I saw the full lead men's pack come through here, and I've seen a few women come through so far. Um, Heather Jackson with a couple minute lead. Then I saw, um, but there's Rachel Drake, Rachel Tomachak. I saw that Heather Jackson was about two minutes off her splits from last year into the last aid station. Um, I think that speaks a little bit to the like sloppier conditions they had this year versus last year. Like I just saw. Yep, here she comes. There's Heather. Here comes Heather Jackson coming through. Bumblebee. Almost exactly on splits from last year. As I mentioned, has made it to that uh, that short climb, uh, heading uh, up to the ridge that basically follows alongside Bumblebee Road between here and Gloriana Mine. So uh, Heather, uh, uh, you know, out to a little bit of a lead. I mean, we knew that she was either going to be. I, I think I don't think anybody thought she would be anything but F1 or F2 at this point. She likes to go out and establish her pace uh, and and do what she knows how to do. And that's yep, right here. Right. That's hit the hit the ground running, you know, no pun intended, really fast. I mean, she's very good at it and she's As you know, despite seeing. her limited career, is very experienced at it. 
Heather Jackson uh, hitting Gloriana Mine uh, at uh, the uh, 257 mark. So she did it right just under 40 minutes. Water. Go get it, Heather! Woo! We'll see if uh, there has uh, been any uh, further separation or closure in terms of uh, uh, the next uh, and we'll women get, to hit this. Get an idea. We would expect Rachel, Rachel Drake slash Sarah Beal. Yeah. Next, and then. So that is our... running a little bit faster than she was last year, and then these are much sloppier conditions, uh, at least early on for what she's encountered so far. The, the interesting thing about Heather is, you know, when she first burst on the scene, there were questions about her ability to run in technical conditions. Right? <laughs> she like done well at Havelina. We saw obviously what happened uh, at Western last year uh, with that that whole snow covered first thirty plus miles. This bodes well. Like this this shows that there is a skill set that is developed here over time uh, that she's been able to survive that early section. Now we need to to watch and make sure that she can maintain that. She didn't do too much too early um, in that technical terrain. But this this could be a good sign of growth from a uh, just from an overall skill set standpoint that she brings to the table now. And it's a rapid growth because you're talking 14 months since yep. uh, that happening. And we've got Heather on the screen right now. Uh, looking really good. I'm just. Like, Amazed at how fast she looks guys, like we she's have, rolling. Uh, Rachel, guys. Rachel, can we get Rachel back Drake to uh, Gloriana? Awesome. We've got Rachel Drake, you said? Hi, guys. We've got Rachel Drake is coming through any minute, and I saw Sarah Beal right behind her. Um, this gap, it's for three minutes right now since Heather left the aid station. That's a pretty fast split. 410 coming through the 50k mark. It's going to be hard to do exact splits because we don't No, yeah, we won't we won't get a we won't get a uh, course record split or a comparative to last year's split until she gets to Black Canyon City, but a 410 50k in your 100k is is moving pretty darn quick. Maybe that back. Like we're going to be looking at a finishing time well under the 9 hour mark, which is very very fast. Yeah, Heather last year ran basically 848 for the full course. Um, and this factoring in that this aid station is about like a mile further uh, than last year's Soap Creek aid station. Yeah, that put her more or less bang on uh, those same splits from last year. Uh, we'll see what the stoppage time is here for her. Uh, this, again, is the big crewable aid station. You won't see your crew again for a about 19 or so miles. And as I came into Deep Canyon Ranch, I was starting to feel it and I just thought I that I had been taking in my tried and practiced nutrition, which it's a, comparatively, I think a lot. I mean, I, I target 90 to 100 grams of carbs an hour. I was getting those gels in. I don't think I had hydrated enough and I just think that that too, and a half hour delayed start where I didn't really eat again in those hours um, came back to bite me. And I think back on it now and I knew 
I knew it would be a risk, I think, to take caffeine then, but I also was like, I gotta just get stuff in right now. And so, um, yeah, I came in and just, yeah, took some caffeine <laughs> there. Uh, I had already taken another caffeinated gel as well. Um, again, thinking back now, I feel like I didn't chug my electrolyte bottle either there because I was in such a flustered state. I knew Rachel was coming in second place and I think I just wasn't fully with it mentally functioning. I was that far kind of like depleted. So just another array of mistakes on my behalf there and grabbed fuel for the next section and headed out and should have just been more, I think, yeah, focused on getting stuff in there and... Uh, as I was leaving, Rachel was coming in. Like, knowing how I was feeling, knowing I was kind of feeling a little, a little depleted, um, and she looked amazing. And I was like, whew, okay, the battle is on. Like I still wasn't feeling totally just like done. I just knew it was gonna be tough. This was gonna be, the race was starting. And I just kept saying, okay, the calories are gonna kick in, the hydro it'll kick in soon, meaning what I had taken in at the aid station, like just stay positive that you'll come around because I've had so many race experiences where you go through those lows and you do come out of them. So I'm like, you're gonna come around, just keep moving, you know, five, 10, 15 minutes. Sometimes it takes some time for the sugar to get to the bloodstream, just keep moving. And a little bit in that next stretch because Fortunately, it was a short bit to the next aid station from Deep Canyon Ranch to Black Canyon City. Um, it was only four or five miles and it was a pretty um, populated section of the course with this kind of mini out and back you have to do to get into Black Canyon City and back out. And so there were a lot of spectators out there, um, people out there cheering. So that actually kept the motivation high um, higher, or at least took my mind off of not feeling the best. <laughs> so that was good. I was able to kind of get back into a little bit of a rhythm. And then I knew I would see, um, see again, um, where I was at with that out and back stretch. I just like looked at my watch and started waiting to see where uh, where I would see my competitors coming and saw Rachel again. And I think it was about the same uh, there still, um, which kept me positive. I was like, okay, hey, you're still moving. You're still good. Like, uh, but then I saw just, yeah, there, there were quite a few other girls coming as well. And I was like, this is, I knew this would be just such a competitive race and everyone's vying for those three golden tickets and everyone's pushing, pushing each other. And that's what we had. And that's what I came to this race for. So that was great. It was another opportunity to practice the mindset and being like, okay, like keep battling, keep doing what you need to do, get the calories in. Um, and yeah, I was feeling a little bit better. So I was still positive. It was just struggling to get get more calories in, keep staying hydrated, and I'm trying to think if it was this section. It was somewhere around in here where, yeah, my stomach, I think from the caffeine, just at that point it was, I, I walked for a bit trying to just get anything in because everything was coming back up. Everything was going out the other end. Like it was just... 
Rachel and she had picked up a pacer there and then another girl I think the eventual second place finisher they came they all came through together in that next stretch and passed and they actually were so like complimentary and we're like just hop on our train uh Rachel's pacer he was like just pull on behind I was like oh, I'll try I think it lasted like 10 steps but um even then I was like okay, you can pull out of this. Like you're still in third, just keep going. Like you're not injured, you're not, it's just dealing with where you're at in that moment. And I, I still was like trying to dig myself out. <laughs> I got to the Cottonwood Gulch aid station and the volunteers there were so kind and I just kind of sat down and this volunteer was just sitting there hand feeding me potato chips and I was just chugging so much electrolytes, ginger ale, and just kind of like, yeah, sat there for probably 10 minutes, like just taking in what I could. And yeah, sure enough, like started to feel, feel better. And I was, I knew that my crew was at um, Table Mesa aid station, which is the final kind of bigger crew station. And that was only it was under five miles ahead. So I'm like, okay, you can get there. And I was starting to feel not great, like to go out and send it, <laughs> but at least that I knew I could make it to Table Mesa. So got moving again and just, um, yeah, thought just, just get to where my crew is. You gotta eat something. You gotta like, force it. What about chips? I definitely want to some salt. Milk on board. I have energy again, so I'm not. I was walking for a while. Sorry, guys. No. no. Hey. Are you kidding? You never have to say sorry. No. no. Are, you, are, you, are you good to keep going? Yeah. You want to finish? Okay. okay. Yeah. I definitely want to finish. Yeah. Two, two and a half. Yeah. We're going to get some beers. Hang out. Yeah. <laughs> Love you. Love you. Good job, Heather. Well done. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm very oh, impressed with your rolling. Very yeah. yeah. This is also an awesome training day. Yeah. 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 Right. Thank you. You're, we love you. We're like so. There was no question in my mind that I would finish. I was not injured. I was bonking, which was my own fault. It's not. And I mean, that's out of respect for the sport. And another thing that had been coming into my mind is we have some friends who, um, it's a couple, they're kind of our age and Simon found out two or three months ago he has stage four prostate cancer. And I was just like, Simon came into my mind and I was like, if he could be doing a trail race right now, he would probably choose to be doing that versus what he's going through. So you have no excuse. Like you can make it 12 months. Things like that randomly will come in and he came to mind yesterday for sure. So, um, yeah, shuffled on and made my way to the uh, Emory Henderson finish line. I came into this race uh, hoping to, yeah, start it with a bang. It was a different version of what I had hoped for, but 
Uh, nothing like getting the nutrition lesson early on in the year because inevitably it happens to, to me every season. I learned a lot, for sure learned a lot yesterday um, that I will be taking with me into June, um, that I will be taking into the upcoming gravel races even. How I prepped for this, I think I feel good with where my fitness was at and how the legs felt and how they felt so much better on the downhill running. I still need to work on some technical stuff um, for sure. So just continuing to progress and uh, using yeah, every lesson you learn at every single race and uh, trying to collect as, as many of those lessons as I can in route to kind of those bigger targets um, six months from now in June.